I am an avid collector, specifically items that relate to my lineage, the Romer family. To put it succinctly, wealth is not an obstacle for me. My affluent background allows me to obtain journals and such at auction. While my possessions encompass a variety of treasures, my most cherished collections consist of journals meticulously transcribed by my ancestors from generations long past. What you will read is the oldest of these journals, a glimpse into the past of my family. June 16th, 1789. The granulated sand yielded beneath my boots with a gratifying crunch. The relentless waves orchestrated a symphony against the shore. The melodic crashes accompany my contemplative gaze fixed upon the vast, unbridled wilderness that stretched before me. Glancing backward, I beheld the Constitution, gently swaying amidst the offshore waves. The beach sprawled with palm trees, their verdant fronds undulating in harmony with the brisk breeze. Upon the arrival of the second raft, my companions disembarked with eager anticipation. It's colossal, exclaimed William, his voice awash with excitement. He pressed on. What shall we christened it? I regarded him, noticing his leggings dampened from the venture onto the shore before the raft had fully grounded. Patience, my friend, I replied, my tone carrying a sense of mysterious anticipation. Time will unveil its rightful name to us. We carefully maneuvered our rafts towards the shore, the rest of my crew rowing with a determined vigor. The majority of the island's perimeter was embraced by sandy shores, but formidable rocky cliffs guarded the entrance further inland. We ventured inward, following a sweeping valley that gracefully ascended, and granting us passage into the heart of this vast island. There must be a substantial lake nearby. That's where we should establish our camp, Isaac suggested wisely. I nodded in enthusiastic agreement as we pressed forward, navigating through the dense undergrowth. Isaac's idea had crystallized when we had circled the island, passing by an awe-inspiring waterfall, one of the most magnificent that I had ever beheld in my life. Before long, we arrived at a clearing dappled with sunlight filtering through the leaves of ancient oaks and delicate lines of trees. It was an ideal spot, destined to be our temporary sanctuary. Through a narrow corridor of trees, a vast lake emerged into view, its pristine waters reflecting the grandeur of the surrounding wilderness. Here shall be our abode, I declared authoritatively, and our collective efforts commenced. The symphony of setting up tents and preparing our newfound haven began an orchestra of industry, against the backdrop of nature's splendor. A short span of time elapsed before our determined efforts yielded a newly constructed camp, standing proudly amidst the untamed wilderness. I stood at the lake's edge, gazing contemplatively over the tranquil waters, lost in thought. Henry, my trusted companion, approached me with a question on his lips, his eyes reflecting the longing for his own family. When will our wives join us? He inquired, the absence of his beloved weighing heavily on his heart. I pondered his words for a moment, considering our situation carefully. Once we have crafted sturdy cabins for each of our families, I replied decisively, my tone filled with assurance. Satisfied with my response, Henry nodded appreciatively and retreated to his tent hope flickering in his eyes. And turning my attention to the immediate needs of our burgeoning community, I called upon three of our most skilled men, Daniel, Matthew, and Thomas. Armed with muskets, they ventured forth into the wilderness, their mission clear, to provide us with fresh game from the island's bountiful wildlife for our evening supper. Meanwhile, the rest of us, fueled by the burning desire to reunite with our families, commenced the arduous task of felling trees. Each stroke of the axe reverberated with determination, 
our collective efforts symbolizing the steadfast resolve to create a haven where our loved ones could soon join us. The ache of their absence spurred us on, transforming our weariness into a driving force, propelling us toward the shared dream of a life together on this new, promising land. With each passing hour, our anxiety mounted. The day dragged on and still there was no sign of our hunting party. Nightfall brought a sleepless night, the darkness echoing our worry. As the first light of dawn crept in, our hope had dwindled. The absence of our companions left us in a state of uncertainty and fear, wondering what fate had befallen them in the wilds. June 17th, 1789 Awakening to the chill of the morning, I quickly donned my clothes and stepped out of my tent, my stomach rumbling from the previous night's hunger. Around me, the rest of my crew slumped lazily, their faces etched with worry for our missing companions. Just as I was about to address the day's tasks, two figures emerged out of the woods, one supporting the other clearly injured. It was Matthew and Thomas. Where was Daniel? We ushered them to sit and handed them water while Isaac tended to Matthew's wounds. Their eyes held a mixture of fear and disbelief. We pressed them gently to recount their ordeal. Thomas spoke, his voice quivering with terror. Oh, we got lost, but something sinister trailed us in the darkness. He began, his hands shaking. It, it haunted us with cunning intelligence. It stalked our steps through the night. Daniel was at the rear. We heard his screams pierce the night air. His voice trembled, tears welling up. It yanked him into the shadows before we could react. By the time that we had turned, all we heard were his fading cries. His breathing grew rapid. It toyed with us, a nocturnal entity tall and gaunt. It's not human, but it's smart. It let us live, but I don't know why, he concluded, his voice trailing off in bewilderment. A heavy silence settled over us, the weight of the unknown pressing down upon our hearts. The island, once full of promise, now harbored a sinister secret, something beyond our understanding. We traded at troubled glances, realizing that our survival on this island was not just a matter of physical endurance, but also a test of our mental fortitude against an inexplicable foe. Bearing a heart heavy with disappointment, I directed my men to pack up and rendezvous with me at the beach. I trudged through the thick undergrowth, a defeated air surrounding me. Oh, how swiftly our grand ambitions had crumbled. Merely one day on the island and we were already forced into retreat. Thankfully, I had the foresight to pack supplies for a possible return journey. Yesterday night, though, I had nearly consumed them a decision that I was now profoundly grateful that I had it made. As I descended the valley leading to the beach, I gazed out at the waves, a glimmer of hope in this otherwise dire situation. Yet reality came crashing down upon me like a relentless storm. Our rafts, the lifeline that could carry us back to the towering constitution, they were nowhere to be seen. Panic gripped me and I broke into a full sprint, my voice carried away by the wind as I shouted in desperation. My companions, their expressions filled with both sorrow and increasing fear halted, waiting for my explanation. Amidst their horrified faces, a barrage of questions assailed me. Could we swim out to the ship? It was a futile idea, not everyone among us could swim and all the rafts had been brought to shore and had now vanished. Bringing the ship closer to the island would only trap us further. Yet the most pressing question loomed above all others. How would we endure the impending night? I pondered, evaluating our options with a heavy heart. We needed a plan, a way to defend ourselves against the unknown threat lurking on this island. And killing whatever haunted us had become a grim necessity, an unwelcome reality that we could not ignore. 
as we toiled under the fading light constructing a palisade wall with walkways encompassing it. Nightfall abruptly descended upon us, halting our progress. Armed with muskets, sabers, and knives, we stationed ourselves strategically, ensuring a sweeping view of the surrounding fields. Nothing could breach our vigilant watch. It all began with a simple exclamation. I think I saw something moving just beyond the trees. Swift reassurances followed, attributing the movement to branches stirred by the wind, and latter an exclamation about antlers, promptly dismissed as a deer. However, these sightings escalated in rapid succession, and as the night deepened, drowsiness started to cloud our senses. Over here it's approaching. A cry pierced the night, and we sprinted towards the source, catching a fleeting glimpse of the intruder retreating into the woods. We stood there, muskets aimed. Lord, it's so smart. It crept through the shadows slipping into our fortress through an unfinished section. Benjamin, brave but unfortunate, fell victim to its vicious attack. He fired a desperate shot, the sound echoing through the night as the creature clamped its jaws around his neck. In our confusion, we had believed he had spotted it in the trees. By the time that we comprehended the truth, the creature was galloping on all fours, its massive form galloping into the fields, crowned with a formidable set of antlers, and Benjamin locked it tightly within its jaws, his form limp. Just as the sun began to rise, casting yellow rays of hope, a creature's call echoed through the forest, originating from the other side of the lake. June 18th, 1789 It feels as though a considerable span of time has slipped away, more than the actual hours that have ticked by. We slumbered through the morning, only stirring from our restless sleep as the afternoon sun bathed us in its harsh light. Hunger gnawed at our bellies, a relentless reminder of the meager sustenance that we had consumed. With the inky shroud of night lifted, we took in the aftermath of the creature's presence. Stakes thrust into the earth, bearing the grim visages of various animal heads skewered upon them marred the landscape. However, the most harrowing sight awaited us when we stumbled upon the lifeless form of Daniel suspended from a tree. Tenderly, we lowered his lifeless body and provided him a solemn burial beneath the shadow of a towering oak. A pail of fatigue weighed heavily upon us as I issued the day's orders. Ten of us remained. Our diminished numbers a constant reminder of our perilous situation. Two would embark on a hunting expedition, for without sustenance our chances dwindled. Isaac and I would scour the island in search of sanctuary or a means of escape. The remainder would labor tirelessly to complete our fortifications, the only shield between us and the mysterious nocturnal terror that haunted these wilds. Isaac and I ventured deeper into the wilderness, marveling at the untamed beauty that surrounded us. Despite the breathtaking scenery, the ever-present threat of the nocturnal beast lingered, casting a shadow over our awe. Muskets gripped tightly in our hands, I carved markings into the trees so that we may return. Each step, each sound, carried the weight of an unshakable fear. What if the creature defied its nocturnal nature, lying in wait to ambush us? We dared and not take any chances. Our journey led us to an unexpected discovery, a burial ground, a sacred place adorned with rocks arranged in intricate patterns. The beauty of the site was momentarily eclipsed by the startling realization that we were not alone on the island. Other people, the island's natives, stood before us, their torsos bare, armed with spears and bows. They surrounded us, their eyes fixed upon us with a mix of curiosity and wariness. At spear point, we were guided to the edge of the island, where a swamp spread before us, acting as a natural barrier against intrusion. 
we passed through the murky waters and entered a secluded section of forest, isolated from the mainland except for these swampy expanse. The natural fortifications of the land became evident. We were escorted through their camp, eventually arriving at a house perched atop a hill. Inside, a native sat cross-legged at the center, deep in meditation. Two guards flanked the entrance as we settled in, anticipation hanging in the air. The man in the middle is English accent heavy broke the silence. The beast is hitting your rafts, your sole means of escape, he said solemnly. I met his gaze and replied, Yes, sir. It seeks a challenge in a manner of speaking. You must confront it as we have done countless times before. I stood awaiting further instruction. Currently, you are perceived as feeble deer. Transform yourselves into wolves, he declared. His meaning dawned on me. If we displayed strength, the creature might allow us to leave. He conversed with the two guards in a language unfamiliar to me and then we were let out. They provided us with food and returned our weapons before guiding us back to the burial grounds, a familiar landmark from which we knew the way back. As the sun began its descent, casting a warm amber hue across the sky, we returned to our camp, an air of unease is settling among us. I scanned the vast expanse, desperately seeking any sign of our hunting party. My heart ached with worry, whispering prayers for their safe return into the dying light. The sun, weary from its day-long journey, dipped below the horizon, leaving the world in the cool embrace of twilight. Anticipation hung heavy in the air, mingling with the scent of the food the natives had graciously provided. Night fell, shrouding the land in, in an impenetrable darkness, yet our hunters remained absent. Despair clung to us, its weight unbearable, for we knew the cruel fate that often befell those left out in the obsidian night. Silently, we stared into the surrounding fields, the night alive with mysterious sounds that reverberated through the air. My eyes caught a movement a shadow striding on two legs in the distance. Instinctively, my fingers tightened around the cold metal of my rifle and I fired. The sharp crack of the shot echoed in the stillness. My companions rushed to my side, our collective breaths suspended as the figure crumpled to the ground. With cautious steps, two men and I approached the fallen form, our hearts drumming in our chest. Dread pulled within me like ice water as we drew nearer. It was one of our hunters, his eyes wide with terror, his hands cruelly bound, and a gag stifling his voice. The night seemed to grow even darker around us as the reality of the situation settled like a lead weight in my stomach. The monstrous creature, a nightmare given form, launched itself at us with terrifying speed. Its enormous jaws lined with rows of razor-sharp teeth, clamped down around his neck with a bone-chilling crunch. A sickening sound of tearing flesh filled the air as the beast pulled upwards, ripping a gruesome chunk out of his side. In an instant, he was gone, his anguished cries silenced by the relentless savagery of the creature. Panic surged through my veins like wildfire as I turned and sprinted, my feet pounding against the forest floor in a desperate bid for escape. Beside me, my companion matched my frantic pace, but he fell behind, his breathing coming in ragged gasps. With a terrifying swiftness, the creature snatched him up, his body disappearing into the darkness as if he had never been there. Meanwhile, my other friend lay limp and lifeless within the beast's merciless jaws his body a haunting reminder of the horror that we had just witnessed. I managed to reach safety, my breathing coming in heavy as I clung to the shuddering edge of terror. Trembling like a leaf in a storm, I forced myself to confront the brutal reality of what had occurred. The night dragged on, shrouded in an unsettling silence, broken only by the echoes of our panicked breathing. Despite the absence of the creature, 
its malevolent presence lingered, casting a sinister shadow over our thoughts. We dared not lower our guard, our eyes fixed upon the ominous tree line, the darkness beyond filled with unspeakable horrors. June 19th, 1789 Only six of us remain now, a mere shadow of the men that we had arrived with. Terrified, we clung to one another, our eyes haunted by the horrors that lurked in the enveloping darkness. The morning had brought its own nightmare, the necessity to amputate to Matthew's leg, the injury inflicted by the creature now festering with infection. The ordeal was a grotesque dance with death, the agony of the decision cutting deeper than any physical pain. I shuddered at the choice that had been forced upon us, torn between the brutality of nature and the desperate struggle for survival. In the memory of that monstrous creature, its savage eyes reflecting the madness within, still haunted my waking hours. I had witnessed it up close, its ravenous hunger tearing my friends apart. The mere thought of its presence sent shivers down my spine. It was as if the beast had chosen me as its final prey, its sinister intelligence preserving me for the ultimate horror. The knowledge that it toyed with us, stringing up the bodies of our fallen companions like macabre decorations, fueled the flames of our fear. It twisted our minds, making us question our own sanity, whispering doubts into the very fabric of our thoughts. We buried our fallen comrades beneath the sheltering branches of the ancient oak, their resting place a grim reminder of the fate that awaited us all. The dream of creating a flourishing community of establishing a plantation on this untouched land had crumbled into ashes. How naive I had been, leading my men unwittingly into this trap. We were no more than deer fleeing from a relentless predator, our hunter a cunning and merciless wolf. Sitting on the beach, the same stretch of sand where my departed companions had once dreamed of a prosperous life on this island, I gazed out at the constitution swaying gently in the ocean's embrace. It stood there a distant beacon of civilization, both a promise and a taunt. None among us could swim, a fact that I wouldn't be surprised if the creature had cunningly deduced. The ship, beautiful and unreachable, became our symbol of hope, a glimmer and reminder of the world that we had been torn away from. Yet, even as it stood so tantalizingly close, its distant allure seemed like a cruel mockery. I doubted that I would ever set foot on its weathered deck, condemned to the island's clutches a prisoner of this savage wilderness. I returned to our camp, a heavy shroud of unease and terror hanging in the air, casting a pale over our diminishing morale. As the leader, I felt the weight of responsibility pressing upon my shoulders, urging me to bolster the spirits of those who remained. Gathering the survivors around me, I delivered a speech. Each were laden with the urgency of our situation trying to ignite the flickering flames of hope within their wary hearts. If we passively await the nightly onslaught of this beast, it will methodically pick us off, stringing us up like the unfortunate souls before us, I declared, my voice resonating with both determination and desperation. We must become the hunters, confront this malevolent force, and reclaim the power that it has stolen from us. We are not mere prey, we are warriors, and it's high time we show this creature the strength of our resolve. The silence hung in the air after my words, heavy with the acknowledgement that remaining idle was not an option. With a collective determination, we packed up our essentials, the tangible remnants of our shattered lives, and ventured into the foreboding depths of the island. Dawn painted the sky with hues of soft gold and fiery orange casting an eerie glow upon the ancient trees that surrounded us. Led by an instinct, a hunch born from fear and desperation, I guided our group toward the second part of the island where the creature's haunting howls had echoed. It was in that direction that our initial hunting party had encountered the beast, 
so it seemed logical that we would find some trace of its presence there. We followed the serpentine path next to the Grand Lake, its mirrored surface reflecting the towering mountains that loomed protectively over us. Every step we took was a communion with nature's grandeur, marred by the terror that lurked within its shadows. I stole glances at the rocky ridge that skirted the lake, its majesty juxtaposed against the malevolence that we sought to confront. As I gazed upward, the tallest mount and a sentinel of the island seemed to touch the heavens, casting its imposing silhouette against the waking sky. Despite the terror, a part of me couldn't help but marvel at the island's raw, untamed beauty. In another life, under different circumstances, I might have wished to call this place home, but for now it was a battleground a place where our struggle for survival played out amidst the awe-inspiring grandeur of nature. As we ventured deeper into the heart of the island, we stumbled upon a hauntingly familiar sight, a grim display of skulls impaled on pikes, standing sentinel before the entrance of a vast cavern. An unsettling mixture of terror and morbid fascination washed over me. The ghastly spectacle bore testament to the creature's savagery, a chilling reminder of the danger that lurked in its domain. Despite the paralyzing fear that gripped our hearts, a glimmer of hope began to flicker within me. Navigating through the very hunting grounds where this malevolent forest prowled was undeniably perilous, yet the alternative, a direct confrontation within its lair, seemed a far better option. In that moment, a daring plan formed in my mind. If we could locate its lair, perhaps we could stage an ambush while the beast slumbered, finally gaining the upper hand in this harrowing ordeal. As the adrenaline coursed through my veins, a newfound sense of determination welled up within me. For the first time in a long while, a spark of hope ignited within the depths of my despair. With caution etched into every step, we pressed onward guided by the grim procession of skulls that marked our path into the heart of darkness. Amid the flickering glow of lanterns, casting eerie shadows upon the cavern walls, a profound sense of insignificance overwhelmed me. I stood a mere speck in the vastness of the immense chamber before me, its yawning corridors stretching in every conceivable direction. The realization struck me like a tidal wave, we were now within the very heart of the creature's domain. Here, within the labyrinthine depths of this cave, it held an intimate knowledge that far surpassed its familiarity with the forest above. Yet demonstrating our defiance, proving that we were not mere prey, remained paramount in my thoughts as we pressed forward with unwavering determination. Our journey led us into a colossal chamber within which a grotesque sight met our eyes. Piles of bones scattered haphazardly across the floor. Some were unmistakably human while others belonged to animals, their remnants now nothing more than remnants of a past life. As I surveyed this macabre scene, my conviction in the creature's intelligence deepened. However, what truly jolted me into a realization of its cunning was a chilling discovery etched into the cave wall. The word, hello, carved into the stone with a deliberate precision. The cave's walls bore witness to more of the creature's unsettling creations. Crude sketches depicting the island, strategic plans for an attack on the natives' camp, and intricate renderings of the very cave system that we now traversed. Each detail was meticulously captured in my journal, a record of the horrors that we had encountered. Yet amidst the chaos of illustrations, one drawing gripped my heart with icy fingers. A ship adrift on the vast expanse of the ocean, unmistakably my own vessel. Below it in crude, hastily etched letters, a single ominous phrase sent shivers down my spine. Behind you... Amid the echoing darkness of the cave, the chilling resonance of Matthew's screams clawed at her ears, drowning us in a cacophony of fear. He was yanked further into the heart of the labyrinthine system, his desperate cries reverberating off the cold stone walls. 
In his wake, all that remained was a hastily fashioned peg leg, a crude testament to the horror that he had endured. The air was thick with terror as some of my men driven by a surge of adrenaline pursued him, disappearing into the depths of the cave. Others succumbed to their primal instincts, fleeing deeper into the unknown, their panicked footsteps fading into the abyss. Yet amidst the chaos, Isaac and I stood frozen, our eyes locked in a mix of shock and determination. The reality of the situation slowly gripped us, compelling us to action. Bravery that we knew was the only currency that might earn the respect of this force. Ignoring the paralyzing fear we ran, our footsteps echoing in the hollow silence, in the claustrophobic confines of the cave, where shadows danced eerily on the walls, we became the embodiment of unwavering courage. Our resolve etched onto our faces like ancient ruins, a testament to the defiance that simmered within us. Meanwhile, the rest of our companions, lost in a frenzy of terror, darted aimlessly through the maze-like passages, their cries of anguish fading into the abyss. As we ventured deeper into the cavern, the atmosphere grew dense, causing my ears to pop from the changing pressure. Our footsteps, deliberate and cautious, resonated on the ancient walls, creating a haunting melody in the silence of the underground abyss. Emerging into a chamber, we found ourselves surrounded by a peculiar sight. Leaves, brought in from the outside world, carpeted the ground, creating an odd juxtaposition between the natural world and the eerie confines of the cave. It became clear that we had stumbled upon the creature's den, a place where the line between the wild and the primal blurred into one chilling reality. In the midst of our contemplation, a scream laced with unimaginable agony shattered the silence. The sound seemed to reverberate from all directions, disorienting our senses and filling the chamber with an ominous resonance. The very walls seemed to quiver in response to the unearthly cry, a stark reminder of the malevolence that dwelled in the shadows. Along with the haunting sound, an overpowering stench wafted through the air assaulting my nostrils with the putrid mixture of decay and death. I dared to peer into a smaller alcove, hoping against hope that the source of this foul odor was merely animal remains. However, what met my eyes was a gruesome tableau. Flesh, most of it rotting, lay strewn across the chamber floor. My heart clenched with dread the realization settling in that we were now deep within the lair of a monstrous predator, surrounded by the remnants of its ghastly feast. I prayed silently that this carnage was solely the product of the creature's animal kills, but the nagging fear of human remains lingered like a chilling specter in the back of my mind. In the wake of that most recent scream, a brutal reminder of our dwindling numbers, only four of us remained, our desperate footfalls echoing through the caverns that had become our dismal refuge. It was a tough truth to swallow. Twelve vibrant souls had ventured into this isle, and now only a fraction remained. I couldn't shake the weight of my failure as a leader, my heart heavy with the knowledge that I had let down my crew, my friends, and my companions. We were trapped in this subterranean nightmare, ensnared in the very jaws of the creature that claimed this desolate underworld as its domain. Amidst the grim echoes of loss, we stumbled upon a small stream, its waters running with a chilling perfection. The liquid untouched by sunlight for what felt like an eternity promised a rare respite. Isaac and I parched from our harrowing journey, eagerly bent down to drink. The sensation of chilled water against my lips was a luxury that I hadn't experienced in months, a fleeting moment of solace amidst the chaos that surrounded us. Yet our momentary relief was shattered by another scream, this one abruptly cut off, its echoes drowned out by the sinister victory cries that followed. It was as if the creature reveled in our fear, its cruel laughter echoing through the caverns 
a macabre soundtrack to our desperate plight. With every bone-chilling cry, the realization of our predicament bore down upon us, a stark reminder that we were not the hunters in this shadowy realm. We were the hunted, pursued by an intelligent and sadistic predator. In the labyrinthine crossroads of the cavern, it came hurtling past us like a shadowy wraith, confirming my darkest suspicions. It was deliberate, methodical. It was saving me for last, savoring a malevolent game of predator and prey. I couldn't help but marvel at its cunning, how it meticulously chose its victims, moving from the most vulnerable to the strongest among us. Each phase of its grisly operation executed with an unsettling satisfaction. The creature's intelligence was a chilling revelation, a reminder that we were not just facing a mere beast, but a calculating and sadistic adversary that reveled in the psychological torment of its prey. Its actions spoke of a sinister intellect, one that took pleasure in the order and chaos of the hunt turning the depths of the cave into a nightmarish battleground where survival was a fleeting hope. We stumbled upon the remains of one of our companions, a gruesome tableau of horror etched into the very walls of the cavern. His lifeless body hung suspended by both arms, grotesquely displayed in the dim flickering light of our lanterns. From the waist down he was entirely absent, leaving a macabre void where his lower half should have been. Beneath him, a sickening pool of blood, intestines and viscera lay in a grotesque heap, a chilling testament to the savagery that had befallen him. The pungent, metallic scent of blood mixed with the damp, earthly aroma of the cavern, creating a nauseating atmosphere that clung to the air like a sinister omen. Isaac, his normally strong constitution shattered by the horrific sight, succumbed to his revulsion, his stomach rebelling against the ghastly scene before us. I steadied him, my own horror momentarily eclipsed by the urgency of our situation. We couldn't afford to linger in the suffocating darkness of the cave. We needed to move forward to find an escape from this subterranean nightmare to seek out the elusive exit that might offer us a sliver of hope. The thought of joining the natives once a glimmer of optimism in our dire circumstances flickered in my mind like a distant candle in the blackness. Yet hope was a fragile thing, easily shattered by the relentless pursuit of the beast that haunted us. Lost in the depths of the cave, every step forward felt like a plunge into the unknown a gamble with our lives. The beast, cunning and ruthless, was still hunting us, its echoing cries resonating through the tunnels like a harbinger of doom. We pressed on, driven by a desperate determination to escape this subterranean nightmare, praying that we might find a way out and elude the relentless predator that stalked our every move. The caverns trembled with the thunderous roar of a musket shot, its explosive sound ricocheting off the ancient walls like a war cry echoing through a desolate battlefield. The cacophony reverberated, amplifying the noise until the very stones seemed to vibrate with the force of the blast. The echoes twisted and turned, creating an illusion of a chaotic war zone and the ghostly remnants of gunfire filling the air. As the echoes gradually faded, a solitary scream tore through the hushed aftermath, reverberating like a chilling anthem of despair in the subterranean void. The sound, raw and primal, hung in the air, a haunting reminder of the horrors that lurked in the shadows. And then a suffocating silence descended, thick and palpable, smothering the cavern like a shroud. In that profound stillness, an overwhelming sense of dread and fear settled over me like a leaden fog. The realization struck with brutal force. Only two of us remained, fragile remnants of a once proud group. The predator that had ruthlessly claimed our companions was now on our trail, a relentless force of nature and darkness closing in. Every sound, every flicker of movement became a potential harbinger of doom and the very walls of the cave seemed to close in around us, trapping us in a nightmarish world where unseen eyes followed our every step, 
and the imminent threat of the unknown weighed heavy on our hearts. Desperation gnawed at the edges of our sanity as we grappled with the haunting question of escape. Trapped in this maze, a hope seemed like a distant star in a lightless sky. The winding tunnels and the cryptic twists threatened to be our eternal tomb, but amidst the darkness a flicker of understanding had sparked. It was a revelation, a moment of clarity that struck like lightning. I clutched the journal, my fingers trembling over the map that I had painstakingly sketched, the map that the beast had drawn to guide its twisted hunts. My heart raced as I deciphered the intricate web of caverns, the loops and circles that crisscrossed beneath our feet. With a surge of hope, Isaac and I embarked on our harrowing journey. Running through the eerie passages, we panicked and followed the map's cryptic markings like explorers navigating uncharted territory. The shadows played tricks on our senses, whispering of unseen terrors lurking just beyond our vision. Each twist and turn, each fork in the path held the promise of salvation or despair. The damp, cold air clung to us as we pushed forward, adrenaline pumping through our veins. The walls of the cave, a slick with moisture, seemed to pulse with an evil intent, as if they themselves conspired to keep us captive. As we pressed onward, driven by the fragile hope that this map, this newfound knowledge of our prison, would be our guiding light in the darkest of nights. And gradually, a glimmer of recognition began to pierce through the fog of our disorientation. We came to what appeared to be the entrance room, the very place where our nightmarish ordeal had begun. The chamber's contours were etched into our memories, the uneven floor, the looming stalactites above, and the haunting hollow echoes of our own footsteps. It was here that our journey into the abyss had commenced, and it was here that against all odds it seemed poised to conclude. But our journey was not over yet. As we heard a noise come from behind us, and there it stood, bathed in the eerie glow of moonlight filtering through the cavern's jagged ceiling. A grotesque marvel of nature, the creature before me was an embodiment of primal terror. Its towering frame was crowned by a menacing stag skull, its antlers casting long, sinister shadows across the terrain. Every sinew and muscle of its lithe body seemed honed for the relentless pursuit of prey. There was a cold tension in the air. It was a standoff between hunter and hunted. My fingers inched toward the hilt of my saber, the weapon that would decide my fate in this encounter. The creature mirrored my readiness, its predatory instincts coiled like a spring, and those eyes locked onto mine. The second seemed to stretch into eternity as we dared each other to make the first move, and all of a sudden, as if guided by some unseen force, we lunged forward. I unleashed a primal scream, a chorus of emotions, anger, determination, and sheer will to end this ordeal. The creature too reacted with lightning speed its gaping maw snapping shut, attempting to claim me as its prey. But I sidestepped with a grace forged in desperation and survival. My saber sang through the air a silver streak in the moonlight as it met flesh with a sickening thud. The creature recoiled, its eyes registering surprise as it gazed upon the gash that I had inflicted. In its moment of vulnerability, I struck again, a savage arc across its back. A roar filled the cave, a symphony of pain and rage. I found myself beneath the creature, eyes locking in a deadly contest of wills. It wasn't merely trying to kill me, it was trying to break my spirit, to savor the fear in my eyes. But fear had no domination over me. With a swift, practiced motion, I drew my flintlock pistol from its holster and fired a single, thunderous shot into its chest. The creature released me, writhing in agony as I rolled clear of its hand. I watched as it struggled to its feet, its form contorted in pain. In a final act of defiance, I closed the distance and delivered two more punishing slashes, the cavern echoing again with its roars. Hatred and fear burned in its remaining eye as it staggered back, bloodied and blinded. 
With a frenzied determination, it retreated deeper into the unfathomable depths of the cave system, leaving me victorious yet forever marked by the horrors of that night. The first light of dawn broke over the horizon as we had reached the shore. A solitary raft awaited us on the beach. Without a word, we boarded it, our steps purposeful and resolute. Rowing towards the Constitution, we stood tall on the calm waters. We felt a mixture of relief and exhaustion wash over us. As these sails of the Constitution caught the breeze, propelling us away from the imposing island, it began to shrink in the distance, its outline fading with every passing moment. Grandiosia, I whispered under my breath, the name of the island escaping my lips like a fading echo. What was that? Isaac, my companion, asked, his eyes reflecting the same mix of wonder and horror that I felt. Grandiosia, Isle.